This video is about a common hand condition, at least in some parts of the world. It's a condition that causes a thickening of the skin in the palm and can sometimes cause bent fingers. It's named after a Frenchman and it has the delightful name of Duputrons, which sounds so much better in a French accent. So let's learn all about this fascinating condition. I'm Stephen Bunting. I'm an MSK physiotherapist and sonographer. This is Physio MSK. Welcome to the channel. So let's start with the basics. What is Dupuytren's disease of the palm or Dupuytren's contracture? Well, it's a type of fibrous dysplasia. Fibrous refers to the type of tissue affected. In this case, it's something called a palmar fascia. We'll get into the details of what that is later. Dysplasia comes from the ancient Greek with dys meaning abnormal and plasia meaning growth. So Dupuytren's disease is an abnormal growth of the palmar fascia. The tissues that make up the palm occur in layers. Deepest are the bones of the hand. And then above that, we have the working parts, such as the tendons, muscles, and nerves. And then we have our friend, the palmar fascia. And finally, the layers of fat and skin. In normal hands, the palmar fascia is a thin, but very strong sheet of fibrous tissue that binds down the working parts of the hand and helps create the typical bowl shape of the palm. We don't have this layer on the back of the hand, which is why the skin is so freely mobile here, as opposed to the palm, which is firmer with more structure. So that's what the palmar fascia does. Now, let's discuss what goes wrong with it in Dupuytren's disease. The symptoms of Dupuytren's disease are a thickening of the palmar fascia. This can occur anywhere in the palm and the base of the fingers, but is much more common over the little finger side, usually near to the base of the little and ring fingers, just here. Dupuytren's tissue can feel like small firm nodules, which can eventually become visible like this, or sometimes cause a pinch in the skin like this, which we call a Dupuytren's pit. Most commonly though, it occurs in bands or cords like this, which often get mistaken for a tight tendon, but in fact is nothing to do with the tendons, which are usually safe and sound underneath these bands in the deep layers of the palm. Now, sometimes the condition will stop as it is with some nodules or bands that don't cause any problems, but sometimes it will start to shrink along its length, causing the fingers to bend. This tends to occur very slowly, often over years, but eventually it can lead to fingers that look like this. And it's the ring finger, the little finger, and the middle finger that are most commonly affected. It's rarely painful, just occasionally uncomfortable when it first starts, but this nearly always settles down. So the only symptoms are the lumpiness in the hand in everyone, and the bent fingers in some people with the condition. Dupuytren's disease is thought to be an inherited condition, although the exact gene is yet to be found. Some researchers think it was derived from the Vikings, as it's much more common in countries where the Vikings got to, and is especially common in the Nordic countries. As a result, it has the alternative name of Viking hand. But it's quite unusual, as most inherited conditions show their symptoms early in life, often at birth, but not so with Dupuytren's. The symptoms don't tend to occur until much later in life, often over the age of 60. So if you have Dupuytren's disease, then we think that you've inherited it through one or both parents. Now this might be news to you, but there are a couple of reasons why this might be so. Firstly, your parent might have hidden it. Keeping a closed fist will disguise the condition from onlookers, and people of an older generation may have chosen not to tell anyone. Or they might have had the condition, but thought it was something else. So-called segs or calluses in the palm are often the early signs of Dupuytren's disease. The other scenario is that they might have passed away before the condition would have shown its symptoms. As a rule, the later in life it presents, the less aggressive it tends to be. 
So if you first notice this in your 80s, then the chances are it will never progress beyond some small lumps in the palm. However, if it presents in your 30s, then it's much more likely to involve the fingers and need treatment. Which brings us nicely onto the last section. What can you do about Dupuytren's disease? What are the treatments? Well, if you've just got the lumps in the palm or fingers, but your fingers are straight, then you don't need any treatment. Cutting the lumps out at this stage will be pointless because it's part of your genetics and it's just gonna grow back again. About the only thing you can do at this early stage is to keep the skin healthy with regular use of hand creams and do some basic daily stretches like these. Treatment only becomes necessary when the fingers start to bend to the degree where they are causing problems with hand function. Usually when you can no longer get your hand in your pocket or you're poking your finger in your eye when washing your face. This normally occurs when the fingers are bent to about 20 degrees. A good test is to try and get your hand flat on a table. If you can't do this and the gap is big enough to slide a pencil under, then it might be time to see a hand surgeon. And the options for treatment will depend on where the finger bend occurs. If it occurs at the knuckle joint like this, then there is the option of needle fasciotomy. This is where a surgeon will numb your hand and then use the tip of a needle like a scalpel to carefully cut through the Dupuytren's band. It's done as a simple outpatient procedure and can be very effective if your finger bend isn't too severe. Another option is a collagenase injection. This is a special chemical that's injected into the tight Dupuytren's tissue and eventually dissolves it. Again, it's done as a simple outpatient procedure, usually over a few days. The first day, you have the injection, which breaks down the band over 24 to 48 hours. You then go back in a day or two and the surgeon will stretch the finger out, hopefully until it's pretty straight again. You then have to wear a splint for a few weeks to stop the finger bending again. It works best for bends at either the knuckle joint or the finger joint, but not usually when both are bent together. If you have a bend in both of these joints, then usually the only option is surgery. This procedure is called a palma fasciectomy, and it can be done under a local or general anaesthetic, depending on the amount of finger bend and the number of fingers involved. The surgeon carefully cuts through the bands which are causing the fingers to be bent. This will leave a scar and you will usually need to wear a splint for a few months afterwards in order to get the best result. Because Dupuytren's disease is a genetic condition, the fingers can become bent again after these procedures, but hopefully this won't be for many years. If you're a younger patient and the condition is more aggressive, then the surgeon has the option of performing an additional procedure called a dermofasciectomy. This is where they do the normal operation, but then they take a small skin graft, usually from a hairless region of the forearm, and place it over the palm. This seems to slow the recurrence rate down quite considerably, but it is a more involved procedure and it will leave you with an area of skin that looks very different over the palm. With all of these procedures, please don't leave it too late to see a hand surgeon. At this stage, it's the ideal time as the result is likely to be fairly good. But if you leave it to get to this stage, then the surgeon is gonna have a much more difficult job and it's unlikely they're gonna be able to get the finger fully straight again. Okay, so that about wraps things up. I do hope you found the video helpful. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.